crack a lack in my people. We're gonna be continuing and I'm switching the, the angle now because my iPad needs to charge. So I got my, um, I got my charger right here, charging my iPad so I can record this video and talk to you all this way. I see your beautiful faces. Hope y'all looking good. Um, hope you're all just doing well and good health. All right, and as always, if you have any prayer requests, let me know. You know, let me know down in the comments. Please let me know. You're never a burden. You're whatever you're going through. I want to be of help in any way that I can and give it up to God. All right. So let's continue with the story. And again, I love you all. Let's continue. All right. So the birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the son of God. He is the lamb of God, the son of man, the king of kings, lord of lords, and he comes to earth with a human suit, earth suit rather. He's flesh. He is a fully man and fully God. He's not a demigod because demigods in Greco-Roman culture are 50% man, 50% God. Jesus is 100% man, 100% God. There's a difference. His mother is a virgin, which is even cooler. It's a miracle, quite literally. And his father is none other than the great Adonai. Adonai is one of God's Hebrew titles, meaning Lord, or Master. Adonai is Jesus Christ's father. How cool is that? You might be thinking, oh, well, we're all his children. Yes, we are his children, but God is his only begotten son. Like he is his son. Like that is actually his baby boy, all right? That is his boy right there. So, there's not a whole lot of detail that is described um, for Jesus' early life. However, and my favorite gospel artist is Luke because he talks about a little bit the early childhood of Jesus Christ. When Jesus was 12 years old, he and his parents, Joseph and Mary, they go to the temple to worship God but he's gone for three days. Three days he's gone, he's missing. Jesus Christ is missing. And so Mary and Joseph are freaking out, like, where's our boy? You know, they're asking people, like, have you seen Jesus? Have you seen a boy? About yay high, 12 years old, you know, curly hair. Have you seen him, where is he? And so they go to the temple, they're like, let's look there. He's probably at the temple. And they go there and Jesus is just sitting there calmly, just vibing, he's chilling. And he's having a conversation with the religious leaders. They're talking about religious topics, and then Mary comes. You can imagine Joseph is upset too, but Mary is a mom, like, how dare you? Why weren't you? Yada da. And Jesus says, Mother, why are you worried? Why are, why are you questioning, you know, where I was? Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? That's really awesome that he said that. It's also to reassure Mary, hey, yes, I am your son, but at the same time, God is my father and I am the Christ. Now, Jesus doesn't exactly fully know that he's the Christ at 12 years old. We'll talk about that later. But he's like, this is something he's saying, I am worshiping in my father's house and I had to be here. And Mary realizes he's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So obviously, I'm sure Jesus still got some kind of punishment for you know, not know, letting them know where he was and being gone for three whole days. But he said, hey, I have to be at my father's house, you know? So then, continuing that, the gospel ultimately, the gospel artists both, or authors rather, both Matthew and Luke, they, they both, Matthew and Luke, they talk about the story of his birth as a whole. It's really, really cool. Daniel's prophecy, like we talked about last video, his prophecy and David's promise are being fulfilled in the Old Testament story. The Old Testament story, David's promise and Daniel's prophecy are both being fulfilled right now. It's really cool. And so, then later, actually, Matthew states, and he really wants us to be like Matthew specifically wants us to be clear in his writing of the gospel. Jesus' birth isn't just some random birth of a child. It's not just a coincidence. 
he is fulfilling what the Israelites have been waiting for this whole time. Jesus' birth fulfills the prophecy and the promises. Matthew wants to make that super clear. This isn't just some random accident. This is a miracle, and the King of Kings, the long-awaited Messiah, is finally here. The Son of David. It's so cool. And so then, God's promise to the King of Judah, who is under attack at the moment, he promises that deliverance and judgment will happen. God promises that there will be deliverance and there will be judgment, right? Right? And then the prophecy says that God will intervene with the virgin being Mary and the Holy Spirit will cause her to give birth to a son. And it will be Jesus. And so what's really cool, though, the prophecy didn't say specifically that Jesus would be born of a virgin. It did not say that at all. The prophecy said that Jesus would be born by a woman you know a woman essentially jesus would be born of normal circumstances that a man and woman have to come together and have a child together but if that were to happen then jesus would be sinful and he would be of sinful nature so he had to be born of a virgin and his father has to be god so that he can be without sin so it's not contradicting the prophecy because the prophecy didn't specifically say He's going to be born under normal circumstances, but it assumes that he is because the prophets didn't know back then that this boy is going to be born by a virgin. So it's not contradicting. It's just succeeding their expectations, if you will, you know? And so Emmanuel, the name Emmanuel means God dwells with us, specifically God in the flesh is walking with us, with mankind. That's what Emmanuel means. God dwells with us. It's really, really cool. And then Matthew teaches us that Jesus, again, is restoring Israel. He is restoring the physical, social, and spiritual brokenness. Jesus Christ's birth is the process of restoring the physical, spiritual, and social brokenness. And then... Luke's account shows that the prophets and the promises that were made that God kept in the Old Testament are also being fulfilled in such a way. This is the coolest part. An angel, when the angel comes to Mary, the angel says specifically, hey, guess what? He will inherit the throne of David. Your baby boy will inherit the throne of David. This is the long-awaited king that the Israelites have been waiting for. And Mary's just in shock. She's not in disbelief. What I love about Mary is she was a very faithful young girl. And Mary, from what we know, was more than likely about 15 or 16 years old. 15 or 16 year old girl, you're a teenager, you know? And she was after God's heart. So she trusted the Holy Spirit. And this angel comes, says, do not be afraid. You're going to give birth to a baby boy. And he is going to inherit the throne of Daniel, of of David. He's going to inherit the throne of David. He will be called Emmanuel, which means God dwells with us. And Mary's like, how can this be? I'm a virgin. I've never been with a man. This, this is, this is wild. This is crazy. And then the angel says, hey, don't worry. God will make a way. God will make it possible, quite literally. And so then, God, when so literally, we learned specifically that these things came last time. Basically, Israel is trying to make themselves kings, rulers, and leaders, and they cannot live up to the expectations that God has in place for them. Israel's kings are failing left and right. They can't do it. But the angels, in, in, a, in a nonchalant, but also really, really cool way, saying, hey, guess what? This baby boy, he's doing what the Israelites couldn't, what their kings couldn't do. He's going to set it right. This is the one. This is the one that's going to set and make it all right. 
he's gonna finish the plan. That's so cool. But a lot of times people in the church overlook that. God promised David an everlasting dynasty, correct? He promised David an everlasting dynasty and this is how it's going to be fulfilled through Christ himself. Israel's king couldn't lead ultimately. So I'm going to actually read a little section. Where's the book? Here it is. I'm going to read a little part from the book. Specifically, it's going to give a picture of what, of what, of what they're trying to say here. And I think it's really, really cool. So, Israel's story attests just as Mary sang, and Mary actually sang, giving praise, saying, I'm thankful that this is happening. She gives us, she has a song of praise. There'll be a whole separate video I make on that. Israel's story attests, just as Mary sang, that God has been merciful, shown strength, pulled the powerful down from their thrones, lifted up the lowly, filled the hungry, and sent the rich away empty, and been faithful to his promises to, to Israel. And through Jesus, God is not simply repeating himself, but is instead doing something even greater. He's filling things full. So as we begin to look at Jesus' life, we should be asking ourselves, how is God going to work through Jesus to reveal the depth of his mercy and the magnitude of his strength? By what mechanisms will Jesus pull down the powerful and lift up the lowly? Through what means will God fill the hungry and send the rich away empty? And how will Jesus become the way God remembers his promises to Abraham and Israel? Let's dive in and learn more about who Jesus is and what kind of king he's going to be and what kind of restoration he's going to bring. Jesus Christ is going to bring restoration. How is that going to happen? We're going to see this in a minute, all right? Talk about that next video.